It's me, Undead Viking. I'm here to talk to you about this game. It is called Ultimate Dinosaur Fighting! As you can probably guess, Ultimate Dinosaur Fighting is about giant dinosaurs beating the heck out of each other and trying to kill one another. Um, it is set in the future with the idea that like zoos became like these privatized uh, corporations, basically, and when they weren't making any money, um, they started making dinosaurs, like the classic Jurassic Park, taking the DNA and growing them, and then they then taking said dinosaurs and throwing them into a pit and watching them uh, duke it out in bloody combat for the joy of the crowd. Um, so it's like barbaric, and I didn't even say like it's like it's it's been outlawed in the United States in the future, but everywhere else in the world people do it. And so like in the United States, it's like this underground thing or whatever. But anyway, so it's <laughs> it's got a cool theme, but ultimately it doesn't really matter what the theme is because this is a really really cool game about dinosaurs. Like I said, beating the heck out of each other and trying to be the last dino standing, if you will. So um, this game is a very tactical game. It does have some strategy and plus it has giant dinosaurs uh, ripping each other apart. It has all kinds of things that I knew I was going to like when I was told about it and when the designer contacted me. Um, my daughter, uh, when she was little, I mean, not so much now, but like when she was younger, she said she was going to be a paleontologist. That's what she, what she told me every single day. Um, her room uh, is completely painted with dinosaurs on the walls that I painted myself. And uh, now, of course, she wants to get rid of them because she's a little older and dinosaurs aren't cool, Dad. But um, I might be able to save those pictures because of the fact that my son is just now getting old enough to the fact that he thinks dinosaurs are cool. And so maybe we might have a flip-flop of the rooms and my son will get the room with the dinosaurs on the wall. But who knows? We'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you this much. I'm not drawing any unicorns. But anyway, regardless... Eh, whatever. Uh, so let me show you how to play uh, Ultimate uh, Dinosaur Fighting. And then we'll come back here and I'll talk to you more about why I am digging the heck out of this game. Alright, this is Ultimate Dinosaur Fighting. And I've just kind of gone ahead and set up the game so I can just show you the mechanisms and how you play. Now, there are two different ways you can play Ultimate Dinosaur Fighting. Uh, you can just have everybody grab a dinosaur and then uh, go at it in just a battle royale and then see who wins the, the, the fighting. Or you can actually do a campaign where your dinosaurs will advance and, and, and gain powers and like even if they do get knocked down or, or, or you know quote unquote killed in a battle they might survive. And so you can level them up and they can gain more abilities and more powers and so on and so forth. And uh, that can you know then that's played over you know several sessions. And I've done both and they're both very fun and, and ultimately uh, the game is inherently the same. It's just you know you, what you're just doing like quote-unquote kind of like a smash and grab session or if you actually want to play something out that's extended but anyway regardless this is how you are going to do a battle now I've gone ahead and set up the classic confrontation of the Triceratops versus the Tyrannosaurus Rex but I want to take a couple moments just to kind of show you there are other dinosaurs you have of course the Dinonychus which you know the Velociraptor okay I'm gonna nerd out and a lot of you probably already know this the Velociraptor is actually a real dinosaur but they're like a tiny dinosaur they're like the size of a chicken or something like that whereas like if we if you watch the Jurassic Park movies the the big giant Velociraptor is truly uh, the Dinonychus, which, you know, okay, anyway, so nerd. Um, so Stegosaurus, uh, Spinosaurus, uh, Dilophosaurus, and Ankylosaurus. So there's those, and of course I have the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Triceratops over there. Just to show you how, what's here. So each dinosaur will have their hit points up here. And then uh, they'll have their facings in this location. So, and then you just have facings one, two, three, four, five, six, just like the, the spots in the hexagon. Each location will have an attack value and a defensive value. Now, of course, like the Ankylosaurus, you know, it was that kind of turtle dinosaur. And so, um, you know, he's, his attack and has that big giant club uh, on, for your facing. So, his attack value behind is going to be way better than his attack value in the front. So, you can see their fours. But defensively, you know, he's he's pretty much great all around, except for like the front, it's a little bit less defensive value, to, down two from the 12 or where else. 
Um, it tells you that his size is large. Um, it gets to do three moves around, um, and then its turn speed is one, meaning that when it turns, it can only like turn one facing when you're using a move action to turn. But I'll explain that more in just a little bit. Um, the custom action: every monster, every monster, every dinosaur has a custom action. Uh, this one is to smash. You rotate up to one facing and do a normal attack facing three, four, or five. So three, four, five. And if you do damage, the target is stunned and paralyzed next turn. So pretty powerful ability. Obviously, he's got that giant smashing tail. So just, and then quickly, um, like I should mention, um, if the size, and, and I this is a prototype, so just keep that in mind. That's why, like, this is scribbled out and has medium there instead. But, like, large. If you choose a medium, you get two dinosaurs. So if you have the, the Velociraptor or Dinonychus, you're going to get two. That's why there's the two bars up here for the two different life points. Um, so... Theirs, you know, their attack value is way good in the front because, you know, they're leaping forward and chewing on things. Um, the defensive value is better front. And, you know, to the rear, they're just not as good. Their custom actions, they can pounce, they jump on top of a large opponent's back, and they get two attacks versus their that opponent's weakest defensive value, and then return to the starting hex with any facing. And then they could possibly fall, and then roll a d6, and, you, and then a roll of one when you fall, and you could fall over. So, you know, so they just have different powers. Stegosaurus, as you can probably guess, um, has the big tail swipe in the back. You notice, once again, really good attack value to the rear, you know, defensive value better, you know, in comparison to the front. Um, Spinosaurus, as you can probably guess, good attack value front, but you know, um, you know, not so much to the rear. And the Dilophosaur, um, can, that's one that can spit venom, which I don't think was a real ability, but regardless, who knows, maybe it was. But there you go. So, and uh, the Dilophosaur is actually like has a range attack, which unless you get some sort of upgrade um, for a mutation or whatever, you're probably not going to have a lot of ranged attacks. So. Uh, so what happens with the game is that you're going to begin and you're going to do a round, and a round lasts eight turns. Now this is, if you've played the game Car Wars, this is going to be a little bit uh, similar to you, and I can't help but think the designer of this game had played Car Wars at some point in their life, but regardless, so you have this movement table here, and it might not be really clear for you, I do apologize for that, but so depending on your move speed, um, you will get to move on certain turns of the round. So in turn one, everybody on their speed, eight through one, speed one through eight, get to move. Then this turn two, like eight, seven, six, and five get to move, but four, three, two, one do not. And then turn three, eight and seven get to move, four gets to move, but six and five don't, and so on and so forth like that. And so you'll go down that list like so. Now, so the first thing you'll do is like when you move down turn one, okay, everybody gets to do a move action. Now, moves are, are pretty straightforward. You just get to move one hex, and you get to then normally move just straight forward. And if you move, and you know, unless there's like a special power ability you're using, and but for these actual moves, you're going to be doing that. You move straight forward, but you do have the option of doing a turn of your facing before you move. You also have the option of doing a facing turn after you move. And so, but remember, you're only moving one space. Now, if you have more than one person that is going that is moving, the slower creature goes first. That's important to note because you know, being able to move last is very important in this game to tactically get uh, your dinosaur to where you want them to be so they can use their attack value and their defensive value to the best of your ability. Now you might notice that there's these little hexes down there. I should have mentioned that a little bit earlier. At the beginning of each game, you're going to roll two dice and then and whatever the results of that dice is, is going to be the number of these um, terrain hexes that you're going to be putting down on the board. Now the terrain uh, will be different each time you play and the players actually put that down. The number of terrain hexes will be equal to the whatever you rolled or the number of players, whichever is higher. There's a couple of rules. Um, you actually roll randomly to see which type of terrain you're going to put down. So there's like oil spills, there's magma, there's rocks, there's rubble, um, there's water. 
uh, when you when you randomly get your result, you're going to place that on the board. And then if you're on that space, uh, certain things happen. I didn't actually put an ice. Oh, here, I'll put an ice one out there, too. So there's also an ice out there. So each one of them has, like, a different thing that can affect what's going on. Um, if you're in oil, you can possibly slip and fall. Magma will do damage to you if you're standing on it. Um, water, uh, aquatic uh, monsters uh, like, like the Spinosaurus get bonuses when they're water. Uh, rubble is, like... Your you're on uneven footing, so that's no good. Rocks uh, block, uh, you know, your sight, and so you have to kind of leap over them or fly over them if you happen to have gliding or your pterodactyl or what have you. And ice ones, you'll you can't stomp on an ice; you'll slide past them, so they can actually help you move forward, and you can get going. So. Uh, you know they they add a little bit of a, a change to the to the to the combat and a change to uh, the setting and like as I said the players actually put those out there and each person should get to put at least one out there because remember that you're always going to have as many of those tiles as there are players so I you know so and you can put them anywhere you want there's no but the only rule is that you can't put them next to each other so you can't make like walls basically you can't put like a bunch of rocks next to each other on one side so nobody can get around it you can't do that they have to be spaced out before i get any further um it, obviously uh if you're on the edge of the board that's actually pretty good because people can't get behind you you'll notice that um if you are going to stick on the edge you automatically have a minus one to your defensive value if you're staying up against the the boards basically if you will uh so that discourages uh that action you'll also notice that there's these little uh, uh straight lines right here and there's little dotted lines right there those are the starting locations uh for the dinosaurs um if you're playing with uh like five or six people you're going to use the the solid lines two three or four people you play with the dotted lines so you're kind of up and you're close together as you're fighting so there you go so what happens then is that each player gets a deck of these cards that has their actions on them. And uh, you'll also, uh, at the beginning of each turn, you'll get, each person will get an event. I'll explain that in just a moment. And I should have mentioned that if you're playing like a smash and grab a situation, you are going to get your choice of a random technology addition or mutation a change to your dinosaur. And so depending on what those are, they can give you certain abilities. So like a mutation here is wings, um, a chameleon, you know, so uh, super nimble, your turn speed is increased by one, big brain, um, action cards revealed, you pick a second action card and use that, so poison fangs, things like that, so your mutation will improve. Now in a campaign game, those are the upgrades that you're going to earn through experience that you're going to be giving to your monsters. So for technology, remember this is set in the future, this isn't like, you know, dinosaurs fighting in the the, the the Jurassic period or what have you, or the Mesozoic or what have you. So cloaking device, you know, these are things that are implanted. Lasers, you know, razor claws, things like that. Internal bomb, I like the internal bomb actually. That was a pretty awesome. I actually won a combat because I got killed, but I blew up and then uh, everybody else died as well. So it's kind of cool, but regardless. Um, so that's just like a, a, a bonus as well. So I should have mentioned at the beginning of each turn and you do get, as I said, when each player gets one of these event cards. If the event is a reveal immediately, you have to do that and take the action. If not, you keep it secret and you can do it. So each, like this player uh, will get bad luck. Play any time you force an opponent to re-roll any one die, roll this turn, play right after they roll uh, before another action occurs, and mud trap. Play before an opponent is about to move, uh, he may not move this turn. So, you know, things like that, where it's like, you know, you can alter uh, people's plans and, and, and what have you. Now, some of like the immediate ones uh, that can hear like play immediately stuck in the mud, you lose your first normal move. Um, uh, oil slick. Uh, you fall down on a roll of one to three on, on D6. Place an oil train on your spot. Um, and there's one other one here, like, and this is the one I like. Uh, meteor strike. Drop a rock terrain piece from 12 inches above the board. Wherever it stops is where it strikes. A uh, one hex away. Attack value 15. Two attack value 10. Attack value of eight. All dinosaurs suffer a minimum of one life point. So I kind of like that one. It's just like a meteor comes and, you know, the second coming of the 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 end of the world or whatever, and, and happens to land right in in this location where you're having this arena battle. But anyway, so what happens is that each player on their turn 
is going to pick, and not only if they move, everybody will take an action. Uh, you know, they, it isn't just the ones that move. You get to go through your action deck and you get to pick one card. You will, unless the card says differently, to discard the card until after the round is done. You get to take all those cards back. But these are just certain things, um, like speed attack. Make one quick attack versus an adjacent point on any hex facing. And it says you have a minus two to your attack value, and then you'll have a minus two to your defensive value for doing it. Um, defend, you know, rotate your dinosaur to any face you want, you don't attack this turn, plus three. So you just have these different options that you'll be using, you know, even, even as simple as moving is backing up uh, and, and you're getting, you know, moving around. So these can be used to move around as well. And you do these actions, you put, take the card, as you can probably guess, you put a face down in front of you and everybody flips it over at the same time. The lowest number will go first. If more than one person has the same number, then you go with speed. So then what you will do then is that you will then resolve the actions as you have. So you can probably guess is like, you know, certain, especially with more dinosaurs, dinosaurs will be moving around the board. They'll be doing different things and like attacks will happen. And then, you know, like the later on after like, you know, an attack happens on like, because of, you know, number, let's just say here, like number six, like somebody did an attack with number six. Well, then after that, like somebody did a tail sweep. And so, and then somebody did a running attack and things like that. And so, but what will happen is, is that sometimes people, you'll have picked an attack, but because of the fact that, you know, your attack is a number six, well, somebody else, you know, did just simply a backup. You know, and so the dinosaur that you had planned on attacking moved out of the way. And so the card that you put in front of you that you were going to use to attack now no longer is 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 valid. And so this is where the kind of fun part of the game happens because you're this is where you're trying to think and outthink the other players and also remembering what cards they've already used in that turn. That's where the fun of the game really comes comes flying out because that's where the strategy is, the tactics, if you will. But Anyway, to resolve an attack, just so you understand how it works, so if these two dinosaurs are, have met, and now they're they're duking it out, and the Triceratops, like, he uh, did, like, just a standard attack. Well, let's just say, let's just say he did a speed attack, for example. So, like, you make one quick attack versus an adjacent point of any hex facing. So, he's attacking the Tyrannosaur, they're head-to-head, -head, so you're going to look at the Triceratops, and you're going to see that he has attack value of 16 to the front. And, but because it is a quick attack, it's minus 2 and minus 2. So to his defensive value of minus 2 to his attack value. So if he gets attacked, his defensive value is going to be down to 10. Well, we're going to have him get attacked here. So he does the quick attack. And what happens is, you know, he has attack value of 16 minus 2 because of the quick. You take one die like so, and you roll it, I got a five, that's pretty awesome. So you will have a 14 plus five is a 19 attack value. And the Tyrannosaurus Rex, at presently, has a defensive value of eight to the front. So he's gonna have to roll good because he's gonna take some damage here. So we're gonna roll, and he did roll the five as well. So that's actually pretty good. So 13, so a 19, 13, that's six. That'd be six points of damage. And you can probably guess these battles don't take very long, especially if you're just gonna sit there and duke it out. You lower that down and all also, the Triceratops in this situation would get six points, um, like six victory points for each point of damage that they do. If you manage to kill a dinosaur, you get five extra. Now, with this head to head battle, victory points don't really matter. It's just going to matter who ends up being the one left standing at the end of the end of the round. But as you can probably guess, because um, normally a match lasts until the first dinosaur dies, whoever has got the most points at that point is going to be the winner of, of that particular situation. So, now let's say uh, the Tyrannosaur had played this, the strength attack. So he makes one attack against somebody that's facing, he gets plus three to his attack value. So the Tyrannosaurus Rex has an attack value of 15 to the front. But we're going to give it a plus three, so he's got an 18. He's got an 18 attack value. Remember, the defense value of the Triceratops is 12. So, the, but but is 12 to the front, but it's minus two, so it's not a 10. So 18 plus four is 22, and you roll 
for the, oh god a horrible roll so 11 so he, the, the triceratops is like 11 points of damage from that particular attack now there are certain things that can happen because of different types of attacks like that will stun them or paralyze um, if you're stunned you're just going to have a minus two to your attack, attack value and, and defensive value for the rest of that particular uh like uh turn around until like you, you reset um if you get paralyzed you have to play a rest action um and you can't move at all and it, like when you play the rest action uh so here i'll just show that to you um you know it just it does does nothing that's all it does it doesn't give you anything extra but when you rest you just you know then you wouldn't won't be paralyzed anymore and if you fall down you play rest actually to stand up so if you did a jump or something because the tyrannosaur tyrannosaurus rex actually has like the ability to jump that's their special ability you jump two x's and a forward arc over train or the dinosaurs land any facing Fall and roll d6-1, make normal attack if you do not fall. So if you fall, you have to play a rest action to get back up. And if you're falling down, um, you don't get to roll any combat dice, and you can't do anything else, so you're kind of a sitting duck. But So there you go. I mean, so normally if there was, like like I said, multiple dinosaurs, as soon as, like, say, the Triceratops gets beaten, everybody, you get five bonus points for being for being the one who killed a dinosaur, and then everybody totals up the total points, and then they win. If it's a campaign, you're going to give that to, to turn those points into experience, and you're going to use those for upgrades, and then you're going to be trying to get like the ultimate dinosaur. Like as soon as the person gets that, like uh, like the, the like the ultimately trained dinosaur, then they become like the species champion, and that's how the campaign ends. So so there you go. That should give you a pretty good idea of how to play uh, ultimate dinosaur fighting. Um, um, this game appealed to me on so many different levels, um, and not just because it's 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 dinosaurs duking it out, but that definitely helped a great deal. So let me talk to you more about why I dig this game in my conclusion, and I'll do that right now. Oh, okay, there we go. That is the ultimate dinosaur fighting. Thank you very much for sitting through the gameplay portion of the video. I hope you have a pretty good idea of how to play. You know, the mechanisms of this game are probably something a lot of us have experienced in some way, shape, or form in a game prior to this. I mentioned the fact that Car Wars and with that little movement track, and as soon as I saw that, I had to smile because I played a ton of Car Wars when I was growing up. And the thing is, is that... um. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the new edition of that, but regardless, the thing is, is that I've always liked uh, the process of, like, the, you know, having a mini or having a little cardboard chit or whatever and having program movement and, and like, trying to get... Uh, my car, or in this case a dinosaur, pointed in the right direction so my machine guns, or in this case my claws and talons, can be facing the right direction so I can do the most damage in that situation. And it appealed to that tactical gamer that I was back when I was in high school uh, and when I used to play um, marathon level uh, uh, you know, Car Wars uh, sessions when, with my friends. Um, this, you know, has the added bonus for me of using a theme that I really like. I, I was a big fan of dinosaurs when I was a little kid. Um, I still watch dinosaur documentaries uh, whenever I can find them on, on you know, just and also Netflix and what have you. Um, I enjoy reading about new dinosaurs being found. Um, like the thing, like, like the fact that like the Spinosaurus is like this cool dinosaur and the fact that we've only found like almost no, uh, bones of it you know no fossil record almost of, of it at all but we were able to extrapolate like how big that dinosaur would be and what it would look like off very very little fossil evidence and i think most of the fossil evidence actually was destroyed in world war ii so i mean it's like stuff like that little factoids of information about dinosaurs and and i find it just fascinating that that this 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 nation of ours was populated by these things you know and i find it fascinating that like the badlands in, in north dakota where i you know like my home home state like there used to be just herds of triceratops like like basically the cows of their era that just would wander back and forth and and eat vegetation i mean i just i find that like 
so cool and so interesting. And so, and since I can never actually, unless I, you know, come up with some sort of time machine, I'll never be able to see dinosaurs duke it out. Being able to kind of viscerally play one on, on a game board like this for me is a lot of fun. Now, on a pure game level, the game just works, and it works really, really well. This is a game about plotting your movement, plotting your attacks, and, you know, remembering, as I said, the cards that have been played earlier in the round, and also being able to outthink and outguess your opponents. Um, this this game is a lot of fun head to head. I played it with my daughter many times. I'm young, even though dinosaurs aren't cool, Dad. I was able to get her to play it. Um, but it really is a lot of fun when you actually do the whole process of like having five or six people all you know duking you know, with the dinosaurs because then people are like talking it's like you gotta attack him he's 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 he, we gotta take him out you know or whatever because he's doing too much damage and like also like when you see like because the game ends when the first dinosaur falls when a dinosaur starts getting down close to like no hit points like you people are going to kind of converge to that if you're ahead of the points you're going to be trying to take that out so you can finish the game and and, and be ahead but the other players might seize upon that and try to block your movement or try to get in the way or, you know, try to, like, at that point, like, you know, try to take out the gang up on the leader kind of thing and get points by, like, attacking him and also, like, you know, basically preventing them from finishing the game. Things like that that happen in the game. And this is definitely a game where, and I've said this in many reviews, the game tells itself a story. When we're playing it, we are acting out what the dinosaurs are doing. We are, you know, just, rawr, you know, and making those actions. And and it is just a lot of fun. And, and thankfully, I mean, like, it could drag. A game like this could drag on and on if, like, people are turtling or what have you, but it is a very enclosed uh, battlescape, and it doesn't take a long time. It doesn't overstay its welcome. Even with five or six people, if everybody knows how to play, you're still only talking about a 25-30 minute game. And it's one of those games also that we got done, and everybody's like, okay, I want to try, I want to try the, the Dinonychus pair this time. You know, and so people would be trading the dinosaurs back and forth, and we'd be right back in and playing it again. So, uh, if you like quick battle games, if you like arena games, if you like dinosaurs, I really think you're going to enjoy the heck out of this one. Um, you know, and I, it's going to appeal um, kind of, in a, in, a, in a way, to a little bit of an old school gamer, in my opinion, because of the fact that this is a bit of a throwback game. So, uh, but there you go. So uh, go ahead and check out the game. If you have any questions about it, by all means, post away. I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. As always, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, this is me, the Undead Viking, telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right.